speaking of insanity, well, I shouldn't say that. Um, Senator Harry Reid, um, who I'm sure is not insane, but I, I think he's officially been diagnosed with foot and mouth disease, the things he's been saying the past few months. Uh, he suggested on Monday that domestic violence by men has increased due to U.S. joblessness. Um, he was speaking during a, a Senate debate over whether to pass a $15 billion package meant to spur job creation, that infamous uh, jobs bill, as they're calling it. Um, and he said, I met with some people. Don't you love it when they say they meet with people or they got a call or they got a note? Yeah, right. Uh, I met with some people while I was home dealing with domestic abuse. It's gotten out of hand, he said. Why? Because men don't have jobs. He said that the effects of joblessness on domestic violence were especially pronounced among men because he said women tend to be less abusive. Women don't have jobs either, but women aren't abusive most of the time, he said. So he's basically uh, saying that men who lose their jobs are going to become abusive to their spouses. Well, he is, he's 70 years old. He's, he's, uh, he's, he's getting up there. Uh, another 70-year-old who made some news in Philadelphia, this, this story will just uh, turn your stomach, came from a TV station Philly 57. This abortionist named Kermit Gosnell was arrested. Um, apparently he was being investigated because uh, a female patient died, so they went to his place to investigate. Uh, the female patient uh, had been given Demerol, Promethazine, and Diazepam. Demerol, as you know, painkiller, sedative. Promethazine is a antihistamine and a sedative. Diazepam is a tranquilizer. Um, they gave this to her before her appointment for an abortion. She came in and they gave her more medicine because, gee, apparently she was quite distraught. Well, she ended up dying after the abortion. She, she, her heart basically stopped. So they started to investigate this guy. They, they, the, the officers go into the clinic, and they find 24 dead fetuses in his freezer. So he was promptly arrested. Um, they're assuming that because of because of, they were they were frozen that he could not incinerate them or dispose of them properly, which means that they probably were late term illegal uh, abortions. I use that phrase loosely, illegal abortions. Um, so they did arrest him, and uh, apparently he's been in trouble before. Uh, back in 1995, he was reprimanded by the state licensing board because he employed a, physici a physician's assistant who was not certified. And this PA was performing gynecological exams without being certified. So they just gave him a little slap on the wrist for that. There were also complaints of, from patients who said that the place seemed to be a little dirty, uh, and oftentimes there was blood on the floor that was not uh, cleaning up. So Gosnell is in jail. Um, there was a little note taped to his window at his clinic that said all appointments are canceled uh, and the investigation is pending. Uh, somehow, I don't know why, but somehow I'm thinking that he might be uh, one of these people Harry Reid is talking about, the unemployed. Somehow I think he just might be capable of inflicting abuse uh, on other people, but uh, he is unemployed, so maybe Harry Reid can help him out. And other life news, Planned Parenthood, Planned Parenthood excuse me, in Southern Oregon, is now going to offer medication-induced abortions with an option for terminating a pregnancy in the privacy of your home. Beginning in March, Cynthia Pappas, the director of that Planned Parenthood, said their board of directors decided to offer the service to provide women medication-induced abortions used to drug uh, use drugs to expel a fetus. Uh, the FDA formally approved these drugs back in 2000, but normally the women uh, have to stay in the clinic to be observed. She says, quote, local doctors who perform surgical abortions are nearing retirement age, Kermit Gosnell, age 69, and we want to make sure women have adequate access to the full range of reproductive health care, including terminating a pregnancy. So no traveling required. You can kill your baby in the comfort of your own living room. Uh, somebody else who did travel uh, in the past month, uh, Brian O'Neill, his, his eyebrows are raising a lot at that comment. Um, Canada's Premier Danny Williams um, is, had, is either going to have or did have, within the past week or so, heart surgery here in uh, the United States. And there's a lot of flack over it, of course, because he decided not to have the surgery in his own country. Uh, in an interview with the Canadian press, he says, well, it was minimally invasive. This is my heart, my choice, and my health. I did not sign away my right to get the best possible health care for myself when I entered politics. I thought we had the worst health care system in the world. He says, I wanted to get in, get out, and get back to work in a short period of time. 
He said he did not announce this, his departure. They actually found out about it through a blogger uh, because he didn't want to create what he called a media gong show. Uh, he said if he stayed in Canada uh, and got the surgery right, right away, people would have perceived it as getting favorable treatment or jumping the line, if you will. So he says either way, uh, they would have criticized him. Um, he says this is something that happens with lots of families throughout the country, so I make no apologies for that. I'm thinking that some of the uh, the health care, <laughs> the pro health care reform people are cringing uh, at those words as well, uh, saying that many people in Canada are coming here to receive the best medical care in the world. You've been listening to the Amy McManus Show on AM 148 WLEA. Coming up next, Brian O'Neill with Connections.